Welcome back to On Base Live. I'm Mookie Betts, and today we got another diamond back, Mr. Zach Gallon. Thanks for coming on here, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. You uh you enjoy Arizona like year round? I do. I mean, it's tough right now. It's 150 bro, so, yeah, degrees tell me about outside. That. So, but... so you're going to work, right? When I go to work, I got a nice little t-shirt on, some shorts, flip flops. It just feels beautiful outside. When you go out here, you getting sunburned immediately. Immediately, like my. I mean, I park my car in the garage, and it's still hot when I get in the car in the garage. So, how, like, what do you? You don't go out on the off days. Like, what do you? You can't go outside. It's too hot. <laughs> no, I mean, some guys will be brave enough to play golf, but like anything over one ten, I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'll just stay at the house. Yeah, anything over one ten, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Like, so like one five, I've I've done it during COVID. Buddies yeah. of mine, like, we were like, let's just grow and grind it out. But now I'm like. I just stay at the house. So what other does is everything shut down like during the summertime? What's I mean, no open? stuff's open. Like the stuff's really? open. People so people just act like it's normal. I think so. Yeah, you just get used to it. It's like it's just dry. It's just does dry it heat. change your wardrobe? Like being here? Because uh, you know where you're from is the complete opposite. Yeah, I, I would say. I mean, you kind of just get into the, the flow of the season. You're wearing shorts and a t-shirt every day unless you're on the road. And, uh, and but it is nice when you're on the road to like be able to wear like jeans and like a nice shirt yeah, switch, or whatever. it's yeah, good to it wear up. different yeah. things yeah got some swag yeah all right so this year you're 20 you're an all-star right and you start the all-star game tell me when you found you were starting what what went through your head hi yeah i was uh i was at my house and tori facetimed me and i'm like drinking a cup of coffee and he's like what are you doing i'm like just hanging out he's like all right i'm letting you know you're gonna start the all-star game i kind of was like what like he he had kind of prompted me before he's like hey it's between you and somebody else so like mm-hmm. don't be surprised if it happens so when he called when he facetimed me i'm like he never facetimed me so it's got to be something good mm-hmm. so he told me um and i was just like i sat on it for like two hours cause i was trying to get hold of my girlfriend then i wanted to call my parents and whatnot and it was just like yeah it was it was crazy it was surreal but i mean we still had you know a few more games left to go in the season so i was trying to lock in for my next start right, right. but also enjoy yeah. that at the same time so is there a balance because i'm thinking in someone like yourself i can just see your presence on the mound it was like a it you were it was cool i'm starting an all-star game but it was also like i i feel like you took it as you damn right i'm starting an all-star <laughs> game i'm balling you know is it was it like that did that come did that come across your mind it seems like it i know? was i was trying to do i was trying to do both like i like for me the honor of starting the all-star game was one thing but like being able to stay in my routine of starting a game was also huge for me so like i tried to do both of like all right i'm enjoying this i'm gonna take it in i'm gonna soak it all in but at the same time like yeah it's like starting a game as much as it's an exhibition or whatever like Mm -hmm. i'm starting this like a legit game yeah okay so let's switch gears a little bit you said you said before that you're you're frugal you don't spend a whole lot of money why is that I don't know. What's funny too is as a kid, like my my parents always joked that if I got money like for my birthday, like burn a hole in my pocket. Like I want to uh, spend it like so you immediately. Just got tired of going broke. Well, yeah, and then I'm like, all right. So like, as a kid, my parents like instilled in me like, hey, if you want something nice, like you're gonna have to spend your money for it. So like, then I started realizing like, all right, I'm gonna save up for something nice if I want it, as opposed to just. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of like a. I'm more of a bargain hunter if anything then uh, like a swap fruit. Beats. yeah like i would rather like find a good deal like if i could find something on sale that's all me but like yeah it's kind of a so you used to go to goodwill and get like the letter like the, the starter jacket <laughs> I, I wouldn't go to goodwill but like i was crushing marshall's and like tj maxx uh, and whatnot yeah, you know uh, what? i'm yeah. gonna introduce you to my mom because mom you know how much you love marshall's zach does too oh, so I'm, i make sure you guys get a little Half my time. closet was Marshalls for the longest uh, time. Yeah. Like, yeah. but that's so what I, that's what yeah, TJ Maxx and Marshalls. That's what I wore to school all through high school. Nordstrom Rack. I still get jeans from there. Yeah. Like, okay, so right. yeah. It's but like, you, you got nice shoes. You got a nice shoe collection. Though. I, I've noticed all the shoes you wear. There were some nice shoes. So if you got a plug, or you that's where you spend your money. Which one is it? Both. I got so my buddy uh Nato at Undefeated hooks me up pretty good. And then so every time I go in there, I'm like, just it's da- he's doing damage every time I'm yeah, in so there. Yeah, so what going in, how much are you like I'm about to spend? Cause you know, you you being frugal, you got a budget. 
Yeah, I ain't going over this budget. Uh, yeah. So it's, what's your budget? What's Zach Gallon's shoe budget? There's uh, that's the problem. There is no shoe budget. It's like, oh. like all right, if I like it, I'm gonna buy it. Um, okay. it's usually stuff that comes out. He sends me pictures. Hey, you want this? I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll uh, I'll take that. So it's like. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's tough sometimes in there. He's he's gonna get me twice now, and in, in the last like week and a half, it's like oh, so you you pitching yeah. for free for the next couple of weeks? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. All right, so we got there's a game called on base, off base. You enter, you out, right? I got a couple of things. You're on base, off base with hitting a bird with a baseball. <laughs> oh man. Uh, you got to be on base with that. Tell me about that. Because, it, y'all, it's a Diamondback thing, man. Randy did it. You did it. I, I, you know, do y'all, are you aiming for the bird? I'm all, No, no, no. See, that's the thing. I'm off base on the the bird, the consequences of, like, what happened to the bird. Um, so, oh, animal yeah. cruelty, you're off base. I'm off base. Off uh, base. Let's get that out there. It was, it was an unfortunate accident for sure. Um, but, yeah, it, it was crazy. Like, I'm out there just playing catch. But one of our coaches, D.C., it's just me and him out there, and you can see a couple mm-hmm. like their ground screw guys. I think are right there. Yep. He like whiffs the ball. I'm like, I threw a curveball. It wasn't anything like crazy. Like it was just a solid curveball, and he whiffed. And I'm like, what is going on out here? Then I see the bird kind of like just tumble towards. So you his didn't leg. even see the bird before. No, you were the, just throwing the it. The bird was flying at like a 45 degree angle to me, and just like I'm like that ball like ricocheted, took a weird hop. Like I don't know what's going on, and then. I'm out there for like a good ten seconds, going like, "Oh, oh!" Like, and nobody's paying attention. Mm. So then I came in the dugout, and everyone's like, "What's going on?" Like, so I think I hit a bird. So they went and got the clip from like our replay guy, AC. How did you? Did you feel bad? Was the bird like limping? I, I, I there wasn't much limping going on from. The oh, bird. he was gone. It, he, yeah, it was, he was out of there. Yeah, oh, you was, caught him flush. Yeah, I, it was. Mm. It was not good. What kind I of could, bird was it? I don't know. I'm not. You a, didn't want to get close enough to see it. I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not like a. I did. I got. I looked over it, but like, I'm like, maybe this thing's still alive and it's gonna come back for revenge. So yeah, I kind of just. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was. I, I. It was. It was a wild experience. Well, at least you didn't hit him with 95. You know what I'm saying? At least it was a curveball. He, he, he. It was a kind of a smooth, a smooth. That's the thing. Like, I think if I if I hit him with a fastball. People would be like, oh, he was aiming for him. But, like, I couldn't oh, aim yeah. with a curveball. No, you couldn't aim with a curveball. I was curveball. just throwing it to where I was throwing it to, and he flew in there. Well, I mean, it is what it is. You yeah. Know? He should have watched where he was flying. <laughs> you know? But whatever. All right, so what about watching, binge-watching a TV show, in on base or off base? Um, I'm, I'm on base with that. It's like... I feel like if you got a girl, you got to be in on it. Yeah, and, I like, most of the time... I'm the one that falls asleep first. So she's uh, like, I'm like, I got to catch up. Like Ted Lasso. We were watching Ted Lasso. You fell asleep. I mean, I understand how you could fall asleep on Ted Lasso, but that's a great show. It's a great show. But like she'd be four, four episodes ahead and I feel bad because like she'd have to rewatch oh, the so same you, episode. If she's four episodes ahead, that means you went to sleep immediately. Oh, I'm, I got as soon as I can sleep anywhere. Like as soon as my mm-hmm. head hits something that's like just semi soft, gone. Unless like. You know, unless it's something I'm like really locked into, then I'll be the one that like stays she up said, until like so, two in the morning. So let me let, what's what's a show that you would watch then? Um, that you would stay up for. So right now we just started 1883, that Yellowstone, like the spinoff or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that's good. I've heard a lot of good things about Yellowstone. It's I'm scared to start it. Yellowstone's good, but like that's Yellowstone or any like show will fall asleep and I'm like, I gotta watch one more. Like one more. I'll watch mm, one more. And then you And next thing I know it's two in the morning. I'm like, damn, I gotta get up. So yeah. So so Yellowstone is what keeps Zach Gallon's attention. Not uh, Ted Lasso. I would say, yeah, I mean Ted Lasso is a great show. Don't it's get a great wrong, show, but, but you, it takes you two to three days to watch one episode. Yeah, that's probably that's probably about right. Yeah, I'm shaking my head. It's a little it gets slow, you know? It does. It does. Yellowstone, you'll see Yellowstone, you'll see like what happens. Like okay. it keeps you're you in on it. Yeah. What about breakfast meat being called pork roll and not <laughs> Taylor Ham? We asked Mikey about it. Mike Trout, for those who don't know who Mikey is, and he had no no idea. It made me no idea that yeah I think I saw that he like didn't know that it was Taylor maybe Ham or something yeah, like that yeah he made me question if he really knew his roots but that's right because it's not it's pork roll okay all right so he I'm does on know base his roots. like yeah like that's so there's this regional divide Tell, and, it, 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 learn me the difference because I don't know what like <laughs> so, you know okay. what I'm saying because I just know it as a sausage egg and cheese big muffin you know what I'm saying that's that's what we called it when you but we did, uh, you know I never I don't know what this meat breakfast whenever tell, you guys you know. play Phillies. I need you to go. I don't know, like in the city, where to get, but like you need to get a pork roll, egg, and cheese, and it'll, it'll change your life. Is this sausage? 
No, it's more like a ham ish kind of thing, like Taylor hams. That's that's where the you thing. ever been a honey baked ham? Do they got do they got it there? Uh, yeah, I think so. So I can go to you know I'll go to Nashville. I got I know where honey baked ham is. Yeah, try it. Yeah, but Taylor ham is the brand. That's the thing. Oh, see, there you go. Know. So I didn't you, even know what that meant. Go- if you Google Taylor, Taylor, it's Taylor ham sausage. It Taylor ham pork roll is what. It, so if you look at it, it goes, it's like Taylor ham, and then on the packaging it says pork roll. So it'd be equivalent to like Jimmy Dean sausage sausage. biscuit. Yeah, someone is like, it's a Jimmy Dean. It's like, no, it's a sausage biscuit. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, all right, when I go, I'll make sure I go check out a Taylor ham. Yeah, pork roll. (laughs) Taylor ham pork roll. (laughs) So, all right, what about, um, you're a music guy, a pregame playlist, your playlist, but it being like soft R&B or whatever. It's it's changed now. Um, It was like just kind of like chill, like just some OAR, like nothing OAR. crazy. What, what like OAR? it's just kind of like a band. It's like oh, okay. a, I don't okay. even really know how to describe like what they are. You're um, a band guy. Not really. Oh, I, not I, my taste is like very, I, I don't want to say it's just widespread. Like I listen to a lot of stuff. Um, it was very like slow, kind of just like, because, you know, you get to the big leagues and everything's so fast. And like, right. oh, I need something to slow the heart rate down. And then about halfway through last year, I'm like, all right, I'm going into the games like a little too mellow now. Mm-hmm. So I've kind of switched it up. It's a lot of like push a T, Lil Wayne, Drake, oh, like so. Yeah, okay. so now I need something to get the heart rate going. Yeah. So, and when it's your start day, you have the music in the in the uh, weight room. I'm assuming, correct? No, I don't care. I I just put my headphones. Oh, you put in. Your headphones yeah. In. So okay. like I I've never been a guy to like. I always kind of hate it when guys like play their music. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like, if I don't like your music taste, and like I gotta. You know, so I'm like, I'm not gonna put that burden on anyone. I'll just put it in my headphones and mm. just do my thing. So you don't want to like flex that muscle a little bit, cause you know it's my start day. We're listening to my music. Nah, y'all I, gotta go. Y'all gotta go go on somewhere then. Now I see that's the thing. Like our guys, there's no like most of our guys just put their headphones in. Mm. So like, so how do y'all talk to each other then? No, I'm saying like if it's your start day, like oh, guys don't okay, care. Okay, yeah, yeah, like when Meryl's pitching or whatever, like he just puts his headphones, headphones on. In. Like okay. Perdomo or Walker is the one that usually does the music. And they do a like solid job of playing enough like Latin music, like yeah. country music, rap, like whatever. Yeah. Like this is good. So I don't think a lot of guys get too mad about okay what's going on. What about a, a on base, off base, snakeskin belt? <laughs> I gotta be on base about that. So, uh, like, whose idea did that did that kind of come from? Like, that was you know? that was me. So, oh, you're the idea behind it. Yeah. So tell me what how, how it all kind of so uh, show belts. Nakona, you know, they come yeah. to the spring training every yeah. year. So, they brought I forget if it was 21 or 22. They bought the samples and they had this snakeskin belt. I'm like, we're well, we gonna wear these Serpientes uniforms. Like, mm-hmm. they're not my favorite, but like, might as well do something with them. So last year I was gonna order it, and by the time. That the season started, it was midway through. I'm like, I don't know how many starts I'm gonna get in this uniform. Like, I'm gonna wait. So I'm like, next spring training, I'm gonna order one. So I ordered one. Um, Looks good, and it turned out pretty good. The first, the first night I wore, I was like, man, I better pitch well on this thing because if I get yeah, shell wearing this belt, it's not gonna know, be good. You know that you know we're gonna say something about it. Yeah, so it's worked out pretty well so far. Do you um, wear it with every uniform or just that? Just one? that one, yeah. And then so Longo saw it and he's like, yo, I'm in on that. Like, oh, where'd you get? I'm like, show belt. So. I think he got like a red one. He got like a teal one. Like also, he, he just wears it with, diff- with different belts with different. Yeah, belts. I think. So. I mean, I think he's since he's gotten them. I think he's been on the IL. But I would imagine when he comes back, he's gonna. He's like, gonna he's, he was wearing. He got a very similar belt to that, and he was just wearing it like to the field, like just a normal oh, he's belt. Like, he's all in. Yeah, all in. <laughs> like, he was all in. Yeah, so That's funny. I love it. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit, bro, and get to some on-field stuff. Last year. You pitched great. You came in fifth, I think, in Cy Young voting. And to some people, like, that's a really good year. They're satisfied. Man, I did great. I did awesome. But I feel like for you, you do feel like I did do. I did have a good year. I did pitch well. But I don't like coming in fifth. Like, I, you, you know, and so tell me about Tell me kind of about that and what it was like going through pitching well and then coming in fifth because that lets you know there are some really good starters out there too. And the, where did that what did that tell you? Yeah, I mean, you know, like coming in fifth, obviously you, you want to come in first. You want to win. It's like it's like it's great. You get the recognition that you came in fifth. And, and last year's, I mean, 
don't get me wrong, Sandy was the unanimous, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. wire to he wire. Bought, you know what I mean? Bought. So, And so were the other guys. I just, I felt like, for me, it was like, all right, I kind of had that second half of just, I don't, I don't even, like, it was just crazy. So for me, I just felt like a lot of it more so was not necessarily getting maybe enough respect just because, you know, it is on the West Coast sometimes. Yeah. It's like, and like, your smaller market. Yeah. Like, so for me, it was just like, and I think what got me was that, the player, like the player vote, I came in the top three, mm -hmm. and I never expected to win because I'm like, I didn't have Sandy. a great first half. Yeah. Sandy ran away with. He, so like, he I mean, he. That's the thing. Was... Like I could, I could look myself in the mirror and say that, but I'm like, okay, when the players voted me top three and I finished top five, I'm kind of like, all right, that's not adding up. Like I, I res my peers, like what they give me, I'm like, okay, like, so, yeah. But I mean, for me, I, I, I'm, I'm never settled. It's always like, so, I don't want to be idle. Right. Th those reporters that didn't vote you to get into the top five, like, do you did you ever find out who those people were? I so yeah, that I have the um, screenshot. You know how the poll comes out and they show you yeah, who yeah. votes or whatever. I screenshotted it and I actually had one reporter come up and apologize to me. Oh wow! Really? But it was weird the way he started. He's like, "You got me in your phone." I'm like, "I don't never met you before in my <laughs> life." I'm like, I don't, "I'm like, what's he mean?" And he's like, "I was one of those people that didn't vote for you, and I apologize." Um, and I didn't know how to. What? Like, I, I, didn't, apologize. I didn't know how to like take. Yeah, I didn't that. know how to take it. I'm like, well, that doesn't do me any good now. It's like when umpire is no. like, "Hey, man, I missed that call." And yeah, you're it's like, too late. It's too late. It's too, yeah. it's too late. Yeah. It, I mean, there is a, there is some satisfactory like knowing that hey, you messed up, but it's too late. I really don't want to hear it. Yeah. From you, you know, and so so do you like because Jalen Hurts has that too. I think he had him losing. Walking off on the Super Bowl, and is that what you use as a motivation? Or yeah, I mean, it's not something I'm necessarily like going back to, like and looking at. Um, it's uh, you know, it's it's nothing like that. It's more of just uh, I kept it for reference, you know, just for whenever I need it. And you're balling this year, and if the season ended today, do you feel like I have a legitimate chance of winning Cy Young? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think um, last few starts haven't been like great, um, yeah, but I've it's, it's close the yeah, that's the thing. So like the season's like you know, it's you're just trying to go on like runs and go on as long as they can. Um, but some other guys are pitching well. I mean, Snell's you know yeah. balling, mm -hmm. Steele, Strider. Yeah. So like, it's I think it's gonna come down to like a good race. But but you have a you you feel like you've done well this year, have a legit chance. But there is still a lot of baseball to play, and so knowing that. Because it's always, I tell you, when when I won MVP that year, and I knew, you know, you hear all the talks because we're watching baseball shows and all those things, and so they're talking about us, and we're walking through the clubhouse, and you see yourself on the TV, and it was like, you know, the favorite MVP, MVP favorite, this, that, and the other, whatever. I feel like it's harder to play. It's it's kind of harder to play from that position than it is from like the middle of the pack going up if that makes sense you know what i'm saying because yeah they game plan to stop you mm -hmm. so we got a game plan different differently against you you know what i'm saying and so how how is it pitching with that like knowing and because it'd be dope to win a cy young like just winning awards it's hard to, to maintain the top the whole time so how is your what how, how are you doing it yeah i think um for me that that's kind of what I love about it. it's like what excites me is like I'm trying to evolve whether it's every start every month every year whatever it is um I've just kind of talked to a lot of guys that have, that have played a long pitched a long time and like hey how did you stay doing what you're doing and like you have to continue to evolve so for me it's kind of trying to figure out like okay what are teams trying to do to me what like are they trying to eliminate a pitch are they trying to zone like whatever it is so what does evolve mean though because when you say evolve is that because what I'm hearing is, you know, your game planning is kind of floating, you know, depending on kind of what's going on, right? But evolve, what, what does that mean? So for me, it's more so just, it could mean anything, really. It's like maybe adding a pitch, maybe tweaking a pitch, maybe mm -hmm. like you're changing the shape of it, maybe you're moving, changing pitch usage, like whatever that, that might be. Like there's it's basically just trying not to be the same guy for a very long period of time. How do you balance changing a shape of a pitch or changing or adding in a pitch when you've, you're already kind of first in 
you know, leading Cy Young, and now you start tinkering with them because you could start tinkering with things and it goes the opposite way, right? This is true. But so, I, so I'm how a, do you? Oh, you I'm know? a tinker. Like I could like if you see me at the field, I'll play catch for like. It used to be like an hour, mm-hmm. and then I had my like my elbow had some inflammation a couple of years ago, and the training staff was like, "Hey, that's th- this hour catch play is not going to work mm-hmm. anymore. You're going to have to mm-hmm. sh- kind of like you know shorten it, whatever." So like I'm always like watching video, and don't get me wrong, there's like even beginning of the year when I felt like I was. I didn't feel great. I was pitching well, and oh, I was yeah. still on the like. I'm like, something doesn't feel right. Something doesn't feel right. So I'm always trying to figure out. Like, I always just want to know like why things are going the way they're going. That way, the next time that comes up, I want to be like, okay, you know how I, to handle. I can fix it. I like mm-hmm. the, instead of this taking me six weeks, it's going to take me six days or whatever. Tinkering and changing are different, for yeah. Sure. So you're you're more of just tinkering, yeah. with to get the shape back versus changing a grip or changing. Yeah. I'm Your I'm arsenal. trying to yeah it's more it's more cues than anything like I rarely will I change like a grip of anything it's just a slight move nothing like totally on the other side of the ball it's more tinkering okay and and going you guys are good right and I think for the most part everyone would say you guys are good ahead of schedule and you are a very important piece of that piece to that Corb I, Corbs I said the same exact thing. And, and knowing that you guys are in a playoff push right now, how does that, when you take the ball, I, and I'm curious from a pitcher's perspective, when you take the ball, got a playoff push, we need to win. I'm pitching well. for So I want to pitch well for myself, right? Obviously for the Diamondbacks too. For myself, playoff push, all these things, how do you, how does that make you feel as a pitcher? Because you kind of control the whole game yeah it's uh as cliche as it is the trying to help the team win do your job is gonna probably make the individual stuff fall into place right so like that's kind of where i'm at so there's not necessarily like any added pressure because when like the days i'm pitching whether we're 10 games under or we're 10 games whatever it is like i'm trying to like i want to win the like Mm -hmm. i want us to win the game so whether it's in a, you know, obviously there's added pressure just being in a, in a playoff race. Right. It's just, it is what it is. That's but, just natural. Yeah. But that, so I'm not trying, I don't really try to let that consume me, really. It's like, I just have to go out and do my job. If I do my job, it's like, that's kind of like the, just the theme of like, just the team is just like, do everyone your do your job. Mm-hmm. Like, if you do your job and rely on the guy behind you to do his job, everything's going to work out. So are you a, a, a guy, because to me, there's kind of two ways to think about it. There's some guys that they start thinking about winning the game, being for the team, they play better. And then there's some guys that think about themselves. Like, I got to take care of my job. I got to go do this. I got to go hit this. I got to go take this many ground balls. I got to do this. I got to – the I guys, right? Mm-hmm. But they help the team too. So which which one is your perspective? And neither one is wrong. Neither one is wrong at all because at the end of the day, both, both want to help the team. It's just a, two different ways to think about it. I would say – I'm I'm probably a little bit of both, but if I had to like break it down, it's probably more of like I like I have mm-hmm. to I got to do what I have to do in the sense of whatever it is. I like I can can only control what I'm gonna do. Right. Um, but there are some times why you know I just certain like shut down innings for mm-hmm. instance. Like I've been struggling doing that. It's like you know the guys will score me a run or two, and then I'll go out and give up a run or whatever mm-hmm. it is. So that's something where I think about it from more of a team perspective. But from the, I would say for the most part, it's like okay, I have to go out and get the leadoff hitter out or do whatever that you know it is that uh, that goal that I'm setting for that inning to try and kind of throw up a zero. Okay, so uh, and let's get back to young Zach Gallon. So it says here you were drafted in the third round when you were young. By your dad. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about that process. Yeah. Um, so I didn't want to play T ball. Like I was just like it, like I don't want to do the everybody ties or mm-hmm, you know, or mm-hmm. whatever. You get a dollar at the snack stand after the game. <laughs> that, that just didn't appeal to me. Like I was right. like, I'd rather just, you know, play real baseball. So my dad, we live next door to the commissioner. My dad was like, Listen, I'm just gonna give him a uniform and stick him in right field. Like just be a part of the team. He gets in a bat here and there. And the were you good then, or you just kind of? No, I was just I was five playing okay. with like seven, eight, nine year olds. Oh, so, so there's no way. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I, don't, okay. I didn't get a hit until I was six. So I went a whole year of like okay. me striking out and my dad being like, 
Dang, he dogged you. And then God, the next please. year when I was six, I I struck out the first couple of times. He's like, that crying, that's five. That's five real stuff. Uh, We're not doing it anymore. So then, but yeah, the commissioner was like, hey, you're going to have to draft them. So my dad, apparently the story was my dad came back to the house all mad. And my brother's like, no, this is going to be great. He's like, draft him in the third round. Because if not, you're going to have to take him in the first round next year. Because they make you take your son, like, for whatever, oh, first okay. round. Okay. He's like, you're going to get another first round pick. You'll get to get another good player. Um, so, yeah, that's so my dad kind of stole me in the third round. And then mm-hmm. we got another kid. Um, this kid, Danny Baldino, I think, was the first round pick next year. It was a really oh, good player. That? Oh, yeah. Like, it, it was, it kind of worked out. <laughs> my dad's like, yeah, your brother was right. He was smart about that. So, yeah. How was it playing for your dad? It was good, um, but it was tough. I mean, it's tough at the same time. My dad, like, was big, like, fundamentals um, and just, like, stressed that. So as a young kid, like, you're not really sh- – you're just, like, I want to play. Like, mm-hmm. you don't realize, um, you know, the building blocks that are be pu- being put in place. But he was a good coach. Like, I mean, I know, like, he would always talk about, like, parents – like they wanted to play for my dad because he practiced. We practiced mm-hmm. like two or three times a week, as mm-hmm. opposed to some teams were maybe in practicing once a week. Like my dad was getting extra practices, so yeah, it was it was great. But like he he now I look back like he was a, he knew I could do a lot and expected a lot of me. But as a kid, you don't realize that you right. just think like your dad's like you know whatever and just kind of like breaking your balls but it's like now your dad like knows that you can be good and he's like sees the potential in you does he still like uh, he, he probably didn't try and coach you now but he does, he's still like all in locked in oh yeah he's you know going to yeah pra- you know, he, he's not going to practice but he's he would if he if he, he, if could, he could yeah if he right? could oh yeah he i mean he watches my starts like three or four times a year like oh, okay. he'll watch them and then rewatch them and then in the off season i'm like what are you doing he's like I'm watching her start again. I'm like, which one? He's like, well, I'm at this start or whatever. Um, but yeah, he'll, he'll throw some stuff in there. Like, does he ever give you any good nuggets? Um, like something random. Like, you know what? That's a, that's a, because now your dad is more on the fan perspective. Yeah, because he's not in the game. You yeah, know, you got to be in the game to really know the player perspective, right? Yeah. So not does he? You know, does he ever give you like a? That's a good random nugget. I'm trying to think. So like most recently, he he. He called me and we were talking. And he was asking about um, my curveball, which like I felt okay about. It's not like my normal curveball. It's just kind of whatever. And he's like, "You're not throwing the same, you know, curveball you're throwing." I'm like, "No, I am. It's just mm-hmm. not like it's not sometimes you're just grinding. Like you know how it is. Like you just like I don't have the feel." Um, so and I was he like, he's just innocent, but it probably let you know like, "Oh, it's not there." Yeah, and I I already knew that. Like yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. like, "Hey, like I'm so I kind of was like, no, I'm like same thing. Like you know, we go through all and like I mean, yeah, it's super innocent. He just wants me to do well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just sometimes I'm like. I, for me, I'm I kind of like I'm like, hey, like I want you guys to be like the fan. I want you guys to enjoy this. Like I'll handle like the baseball yeah, yeah. stuff and like let me grind about it. Like you guys just you know. So it's good. I mean, but it's it's all comes from a good place. So I right. can't get mad at it. So growing up and you you know you're five ten. How, how, I guess you graduate. And you how's the summer? I mean the, the winters and stuff there because you guys oh. don't get to play. Yeah, you guys don't get to play. Like so, what do you do? Yeah, you 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 just inside in the gym taking ground ground balls. Yeah, you're at, like indoors. So I mean, I got super lucky. Um, the travel team that I started playing for, they used to do. It was like 13, 18. They didn't have like literally. They didn't do okay. young kids. Me and my buddies were the first eleven year old team that they did, and they had an indoor facility. And then they moved when we were 12, they moved into like this badass one that was like huge. You could take ground balls, full mm-hmm. infield, whatever. Um, so you just kind of from November to March, you're like indoors, like just do you grinding. feel like that's a that's a disadvantage? I think yes and no. Um, I think obviously you're not getting the real reps on the field and you're you're doing that, but at the same time, there's this at least for me, one, it was as a pitcher. Like, my parents shut me down. I played basketball, and it was just mm-hmm. like, don't pick up a ball is what it is. I think you save your arm because you see a lot of these kids now Let's playing throw, all year. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's crazy. And then at the same time, I, I there was this – you always heard, oh, well, the kids from, you know, Florida, Georgia, California, playing 12 years around, they're 12 months around, they're, you know, more advanced than you, yeah. and you kind of get that in your head. So it's like builds this chip on your shoulder. Yeah. So there's I mean, two, it, two parts it, to it. It kind of – I said the same thing, you know, being from Nashville – it was kind of hit or miss in the wintertime, so we were inside. Like, and I hooped, too. So 
to your point, like I wasn't doing anything, you know, with baseball and and so when I got back out there, I do I did feel like I kind of was behind those teams because those teams they they won all the time and so yeah. And you look around the league, and a lot of guys are from the Florida, California, Texas thing. But you know, I to your point, I don't know how much of an advantage it is. So you hooped. That, tell me about that. Like you hooped all through high school. <laughs> no, I just played my uh, just my freshman year. I played. Why'd you stop? So it got to the point where they were. I was a solid player, but I wasn't like gonna get crazy varsity minutes. So it was like the um, coach was like, "Listen, you know, anyone who wants who's planning on making the varsity team, you have to play summer ball. You gotta play this, summer basketball." The, the, uh, this was going oh, in summer basketball. Summer basketball. So you, it would, okay. Okay. So I was like, after my freshman year, like I was like, okay, like I'm, I don't know, I would have got okay minutes, nothing crazy. Um, and I was, I was small, I was undersized. Like I didn't hit my growth spurt. So I kind of saw the writing on the wall. I was like, all right, I'm going to have to give up baseball in the summertime. And I'm going to like, at the time, I'm five, 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 six, my freshman year. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not, there's, it's just like, I had to look myself in the mirror. And I'm like, yeah, it's just probably not, it's not for so me. He made, yeah. See, I, I was too busy in the summertime. I was going to hoop too. I, I was skipping the baseball tournaments. Uh, I see. I, for me, at baseball just like I was. Even when, like I played football one year and. Oh, you played football too. One year when I was in like sixth grade, so oh, I was okay. like, and it was what, it what was position miserable. did you play? Oh, this is uh, my dad loves this story. So I was my dad before I go to football practice. He's like, we're gonna have the tryouts or whatever. And my dad played. My dad coached like youth football all like all growing up. He played on the line, so he decides he's going to show me a three-point stance because my brother went, and he got in a track stance, tried to hit the sled. It was the whole thing. So my dad showed me. I go to practice, get in the three-point stance, and they're like, look at this great, like, I, I'm 75 pounds. Yeah, I was wondering. If and were. it's on the 105 team. So I just – all I want to do is play on my boys. I played with yeah. baseball. They were playing on the B team. They were all getting to play wide receiver, quarterback, whatever. <laughs> and they decide they're going to put me on the A team. And I'm 75 pounds on the 105 pound team. <laughs> our quarterback, our running back, our tight end, all like bigger than me. I'm like uh, I think okay. this is like I think I should probably be running the football, and they yeah, should be up yeah, front. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just like, and I'm my parents were like, you one sport at a time. There's no two sports at the oh, same well, time. Okay, so okay. that was kind of like, yeah, I miss baseball. I don't, I don't so, think. And that that then you were just pretty all baseball after your freshman year in high school. Yeah, it was all baseball after that. So. And did you play any other positions in high school? I played a lot of shortstop. Plus, like, so you played short and pitch. That yeah. Was it. So I, uh, did, I probably you, played more short in high school than I pitched. Did you get, you got drafted as a pitcher? Yeah. Yeah. Played more short. What about during the summer? Summer, I probably, I pitched a little bit more. I played second base, but like pitched more. That was my thing. Like in the summertime, it was like, all right, you're going to, pitching is probably going to be your thing. your thing. So, but in high school, we had a good amount of arms. Like Devin Smelter was on oh, our okay, team too. Okay. He was more of our ace, like our number okay. one guy. He pitched and it was like I played short. Like my senior year was the first time I threw regularly like on a weekly basis. Mm. Other than that, it was like I would come in and throw relief or, you know, pitch like one like a, we had a big conference game or whatever. Where'd you hit in the lineup? Uh I think my sophomore year hit like ninth and then junior senior year like first or second somewhere. Were you a good hitter? I was okay. Like I didn't have any juice, so I was <laughs> trying to steal singles and doubles and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I didn't. I, there wasn't much pop in there, but I could pick it. Like I could play. Yeah, like, yeah. I love taking ground balls. Like yeah. BP. You can. Yeah, you can tell now. I'm like I don't care. Yeah. I'm like I would. I'll take ground balls for an hour. What? Do are you sad that you don't get to hit anymore? No. Or were you? <laughs> I was totally okay with that. So my only regret about it is that I don't have a home run in the big leagues. Mm. That's my only regret. Mm. But my like. They don't pay me any more or less if I hit yeah, one right. 100, I hit 300. Yeah. Like, it's the same thing. That's why I try to tell my dad. I'm like, Dad, listen, they're not going to pay me any more or less if I get a hit tonight or not. It's like so, the only thing yeah. I can do is get hurt out yeah. here. Yeah. So I like being able to just have my pitch count, throw to that, let somebody else who gets paid to hit, hit, do their job. So it's kind of. So then you go to UNC, right? Mm -hmm. Three years. And. How was that? How how was UNC? Why why did you choose to go to UNC? Yeah, so I, I my dad had family from down there, so he was the first like Carolina fan, like in our family, like back in the seventies. Um, and then I, my brother was a huge Michael Jordan fan, so mm. I became a huge Michael Jordan fan. He went to Carolina, um, and then like when I started taking notice of college baseball, they were playing in Omaha. It seemed like every year, so. 
I'm like, I want to, I want to do that. I want to play in Omaha. It seems like Carolina gets there every year. So it's, let's go there. Um, so you, like from a young kid, like I always wanted to go to Carolina. You, oh, the, the whole time you want to go to Since I was like 10 or 11, it was like, I want to go to Carolina. Um, How, and, and, yeah, and just, I got, I got to go up there once and I got to, one of my, uh, best friends brother played on the jv team mm-hmm. in north carolina so that's a, a super dope campus I it's mean, unbelievable it's, a, it's amazing yeah. so do you have any like dope stories or experiences that happened at north carolina or did you get to see michael jordan did he come or you, you know what i'm saying is anything like that that kind of happened uh, i'm trying to think so i think he was there the one year that the university went from Nike to Jordan brand. I think he was at the game. I don't remember if I was there, like if it was the year I was there or the year after I left. But, yeah, there was nothing crazy. I remember my junior year was the year we lost to Villanova in the national championship. Mm. So just kind of the – Were you at the game? No, I was in Chapel Hill, like, watching it. Mm -hmm. Like, just the vibe around the the town is awesome because, I mean – basketball is like next level there yeah. it's basketball and then everything else yeah, is way right, down here right, so right. just the vibe of being around that obviously they didn't pull out the victory but just kind of being a part of that just seeing what it's about and like what you know this whole you know thing is it was crazy so you're a jordan guy i gotta ask the question that everybody in america asks <laughs> jordan or lebron jordan <laughs> that was quick I, listen i as I've gotten older, I've if you would ask me five years ago, I I wouldn't even entertain the question. Okay. But as I've gotten older, I I do respect like what LeBron's done, the longevity of it. That's kind of just like, but it's Jordan still. Jordan doesn't. Still. Yeah. Okay. So you got drafted by the Cardinals in the third round again. Was that that was that like kind of neat, like or ironic or anything? Did you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I grew up a Cardinals fan. I was a huge Mark McGuire guy when I was a kid. Mm. Um, I wore twenty five. Um, just like up until I was, until we switched towns and some other kid had 25. So I'm like, I got to pick a new number now. But I was a, so for me, it was like, it's what I dreamed of. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, all my life, I was like, I'm going to play in Bush Stadium. Like, that's what I want to do. Like, I'm going to play for the Cardinals. And they get drafted by him. Yeah, it was just like, it was insane. And, th- but then you got traded. And so, how did you feel when you got traded? Like, were you, yeah, I mean, that's, that's your first taste of the, hey, this thing's a business. This, yep. It's mm-hmm. a business. So, um, yeah, obviously super bummed um, just because I'm like, all right, everything is working out. Um, got drafted by the Cardinals, going to play in the big leagues for the Cardinals, your childhood team that you know you're a fan of. And then, you know, you get traded and everything gets, you know, turned upside down. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it's a, you learn that it's a business fast and it doesn't, it doesn't matter, like all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, it was – I think for me it was I got to go to a place where – there was maybe some more opportunity, uh, maybe some different voices and stuff that, you know, maybe changed the trajectory of my career. And so you come – and then you get here, got traded here, right? Because yep. the Marlins – I don't – did you debut with the Marlins? Mm-hmm. Did you debut with – you weren't there long, though. I don't remember like you a there. Month and I think a half, I was – because I was in the American League. I didn't see you. No, 19 – was my what was your what was your first year in LA? 19? 20. 20? Okay, yeah. So 19 was my first year with the Marlins. That's why I, I was yeah, up I like two that. months, I think, yeah. before I got traded. And then you got traded to the Diamondbacks. Mm-hmm. And so when you got traded to the Diamondbacks, you already knew it was a taste of of the business. So you weren't really concerned with that, I'm sure. And you went straight to the big leagues when mm-hmm. you got traded here? Yep. I thought I was getting sent down when I got Oh wow. I got called in the office um in the Mattingly's office and the first like two minutes I blacked out I'm like damn they're sending me down like this sucks mm-hmm. like I gotta go down the triple a whatever I'm pitching well and I'm like I might as well tune back into this conversation see what and then <laughs> they were like uh yeah we're gonna trade you but they didn't tell me where so I was kind of like oh that wow. whole 10 minute conversation I had to ask at the end like all right so where am I going it's like you're going to Arizona all right cool so when you came out here you were excited the team I- the team wasn't that good at the time. No, they were in a that that team was in a playoff. What they, year was that? Nineteen. They were like two games. See, I wasn't out of, here. They That's were two why. games out of the wild card. So then you come in twenty. Yeah, nineteen. You pitched. Yeah, twenty. At what point do you know? Like I'm staying. Like this. This is because they had that. They right out of the wild card. Right. Mm-hmm. You come in. You help that team, and then I'm not sure everything that was going on. So that's why I'm asking. Like, at what point did you know? I'm here. 
I enjoy here. We're going to win here. This, that, and the other. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, so, like you said, I had no idea if I'm going to stay in the big leagues or what. Pitch 19. And just kind of the sentiment I've got just from talking to, like, Mike Hayes and our GM and, and just some other people around is, like, no, we we used some capital to get you. Like this is we didn't just get you to like be an up down guy. Mm-hmm. Like we want mm-hmm. you to be here and be a part of this thing that we're trying to build. Um Did that help that helped the mental for sure. Yeah, for sure. And like obviously playing well helps too. Like so I played well those fifteen starts or whatever I had. So I, I felt pretty good about going into twenty and they were m- more so like we we've, we've been trying to get you since May or whenever they were trying. So there was like mute, there was respect and being like mm-hmm. we want you we want you here so that was comforting um they kind of gave me the go to, to go into the off season and being like okay i don't necessarily have a job cemented but it's like my job to lose so it kind of propelled me to be like all right i'm gonna earn this thing take it um and yeah i mean we we tried in 20 we went on got um we signed bum mm-hmm. starling mm-hmm. Marte. we traded yeah. for and like just tried to and then you know obviously everything with the 20 years yeah, is crazy sure. so but yeah and I'm sure you I'm sure you could see yourself staying, you know, where in whatever opportunity, you know, for a long time. But being here, being what what would it mean to you if Arizona if you were to stay with Arizona knowing that this is kind of where you got your first real opportunity? Yeah, I'm always gonna have like just crazy love for for Arizona just because, you know, they 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 saw something in me that maybe not a lot of their teams did. Um and I think they treated me like a, a veteran with not much service that like mm-hmm. they, they put a lot of trust in me. So like I, I have just a lot of respect for them in that sense. Um, and yeah, I mean, just I said it this past all season. It's like this town in terms of sports, like they just, they deserve a winner. Like and, you know, whether it's us, it's the Suns, like the Cardinals, like it just hasn't like worked out in the last, you know, how many every year. So like. But the fans are here. Like mm-hmm. they, definitely here. they they show up. So it's like I wanna, you know, be a part of, you know, that the pride people have in the city for, you know, baseball team. So you got you guys are young, right? Really young. You got so who who was kind of like the vet that kind of runs it? Or or is there one? Is it kind of like the collective uh, a collective thing? Because I know Longo is there mm-hmm. and he's a vet. You know, he he's had he's got a lot of time. Christian Walker has, is there, Cattell Marte, you know, but there's no real, to me, I don't see like a real dominant, or it seems like you guys are all just a collective unit. Yeah, it's, it, I, that's, it's more collective. That's a good way to put it. It's just kind of, so you had like me, Merrill, Walker, um, Carson, like guys like that mm-hmm. kind of all are in the same service time realm, like all kind of came up together. Like Merrill and I were like rookies, even though Merrill had spent some time in Korea and like, mm-hmm. it, so Tori was like, hey, like, I know you guys are young, but, like, I'm going to treat you guys like you're, you've are you been here five, mm-hmm. six, seven years. Um, so, like, we all kind of had to learn that as, you know, this thing has gone on and just the stuff that we've gone through in the last, you know, you know, 20, 21, even 20 to beginning of 22, those experiences have kind of, you know, aged us in the sense of, like, veterans. But I think that's kind of what makes our clubhouse good is that it was – like I said, the guys I mentioned, and then you have the young guys come up, like Corbin, Alec mm-hmm. Thomas, Jake McCarthy. Those guys all grew up together in the minor leagues. And then there's no, like, kind of separation between right. the young yeah. guys and the old guys. Like, everyone just wants to be boys and hang out and, you know, have a good time. Tell me this, because I'll tell you my perspective. I want to hear what your relationship with Tori, what that means to you and how that helps you. Because for me, I had Tori and... 14, 15, I think he came over in either 17, 17 I, think, I think. So maybe. I had him in yeah. 14, 15, 16. And at the time, I think I was one of the only rookies. Jackie was there, but nobody else was there that was, you know, my age, you know, kind of. Because I'm work. i kind of the new wave that kind of came through, mm-hmm. right? You know, the, the Red Sox, they had just won the World Series. And so 13, in 13, and we were terrible in 14, right? And so, but Tori, Tori is the one that single-handedly kept me mentally sane at the field because, you know, you've been, you've seen veterans, especially losing. It's just not fun. Nobody wants to lose. And especially 
a team that just won the World Series. Now they're one of the worst teams in baseball. Everybody was salty. And I understood. Well, I didn't at the time, but now I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tory having the relationship with Tory, like his openness, his willing to communicate, his he knows when to push you, he knows when to back off, he knows when you need to chill. He knows having that relationship with him meant the world to me. And now he's your manager. And so I want to hear that perspective, you know, like what that means to you. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I, I like I said, he kind of he he had told me. And like when we were talking about the Merrill thing, like putting more responsibility on me, even as a young guy was he told me, he's like, this is very similar to what I did with you. Like talking oh, about yeah, like okay. he's like, this is exactly what I did with Mookie. Like I, he was a young guy, but I could see where he was going. And I won like we trusted him with a lot more responsibility than somebody like, you know, with a year, whatever, however much service time mm-hmm. he had, like as a young guy. So for me, I was like, OK, to one be in the same conversation as you at this point in time, you'd accomplish so much. You'd won a world series. You'd won MVP. So like, I'm like, all right, cool. That's like, and then at the same time, he just, like you said, he's a very good communicator. Like I remember there was a start, like my third start after I got traded here, it was in Colorado and I hadn't pitched in Colorado yet. We're in a playoff race and I'm like young kid. I'm trying to like do as much as I can. And after that, he takes me out to the fourth inning. I'm like, I like got 90 pitches. I'm like, oh, I'm good. Like, I'm mm-hmm. good to go. Like, I got at least another one in me. He's like, listen, we're going to get to a point in time when I'm here and you're here and we're going to be able to have these conversations where, you know, I'm bouncing off you and all this stuff. So, like, he just, from the get-go, he was just very trustworthy and had an open door. And I didn't, I was expected it just to be like, the manager is going to tell you exactly what they're going to do and you just kind of have to abide by it. But, like, you know, he's got an open door policy that I can come in and say, like, we'll have, like, what he calls, like, chapel. Like, I'll be like, mm-hmm. hey, like, we're going to go in and, like, talk about something that, like, whatever. And, yeah, he's he's awesome. He's the best. And I like it. He never really, even though he was always in a position of power, he never, like, flexed it. You know, he, it was understood, but, you know, he, use, he uses it he, to yeah. his advantage. Like, yeah, and he, it, like, know? he knows, like, that. see, that's the thing that, like, I think a lot of <clears throat> some of the, like, really good coaches don't get credit for is that, you have to learn how to manage personalities. That's really what you are. It, that's like, what you're doing. I mean, that's the thing. Like you have to. It's not like college where it's like you could run it like a boot camp. You could run it like this. Is like you have to manage personalities and like you said, know when to push buttons, know when to pull off the reins. Like, and he does a really good job of that. Like, feeling the pulse and like he's the only. I mean, I've only I've had two managers in the big leagues, but when I got up here to see him come out to BP and go to talk, try to talk to everybody, everybody yeah. or a group of guys, like whatever, throughout BP, I was like, okay, that's cool. Like he's actually trying to get to know, and it's totally non-baseball stuff. It's mm-hmm. He talks about random stuff. Random, random stuff, like just trying to get to know, like, so, and I, I think that's cool. That's something that's like, you know, I, th- I thought was different. Yeah. So tell me about your, you like, shoot, do you, do you like clothes? Like I know you, I know you like wearing clothes, right? But I ain't no, just walking like around that. there. Yeah, <laughs> no. So, hey, you do you naked and afraid? You do what you got to do. This I do like that show. You know, naked and afraid with some J's on. That's true. All right, we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but do you spend money on clothes? Like you like luxury brands and, the, and those things? Because based on I'm asking because your all, your all star game outfit. Yeah, that was outside of my comfort. That was oh, outside you weren't even comfortable in. So you no, I was, I was, I was, I was good, but like that going crazy brand stuff was that's not you it's not me but i'm figuring like okay how you know who knows how many times you get to walk on a red carpet all-star right. game i'm so like let's just do like let's just crazy. do something here so it's the gucci sweater is what's out of my comfort zone like will i wear on the golf course you know pants with a collared shirt and then like a crew or like a sweater over it? like that's normal but to go for the brand stuff that's that's what yeah that's a little different so for if, me. what if it had like an m for marshall's yeah, I, listen, I could have went and got you a Marshalls thing, you too. You would have loved that. Yeah, I, okay. admittedly, I haven't been to a Marshalls in a while, but, like, yeah, I just kind of was – like, I'm like, let's just do something, like, out of, out of the ordinary. So, And, and so the one thing I do want to comment on, because I feel like it sets the whole outfit off, is the hair <laughs> or lack of, you know? I appreciate and, it. You got a, a nice flow of hair, and you cut it. It was longer, right? Yeah, it I actually was. just got a cut. I got like a trim yesterday. So, how you how you keep your head? Is it head and shoulders? You know how you? I use uh, 
whatever is usually at the field, like head and shoulders, uh, is like the probably the the one that's normal. Uh, so I I look all curly and it's and just naturally curly. Like it's just naturally. Oh, you curly. just got a good head. Of and hair. I just put some like I forget what it, like just it's like a conditioner cream whatever. I just put it in before I left, and it just like curls up. So you like, don't even. It's not even like. You're not the guy that gets out of the shower, puts wraps the towel around him, and then goes stand in front of the mirror. And I mean, yeah, I do that to, like to put this stuff in my hair. Oh, okay. But like, I'm not like I was doing it like you know trying to blow dry for a while. I'm like, that's too much maintenance. Yeah. Like, I just wanted to you're be not, like that's not you. I so want your head, your naturally. hair is just naturally, just naturally curly. Nice. Yeah. So who who does does because Corbs has a nice head of hair too, right? He does. But he got the the mullet. Yeah. Does his uh, under because he always has a hat on. His mullet look good. It's all mullet. Like for me, it's not my. It's not my style. Yeah, like, I don't, I'm not sure it's anybody's. Yeah, except his. yeah. That's I mean, and I've had a couple of people. I've had some like fans heckle me, and they're like, "No, it's mullet." I'm like, "It's not a mullet. Like yeah. it's like it's all. It's it's not a mullet. Like it is what it is." Um, What's crazy is Corbin would be like, "Thanks." Yeah, like so. Know, some dudes like embrace it. it. Like Chafin, yeah. he's like, "Yeah, yeah he's great." Yeah. Like you know. So uh, who, who who would you say? Give me like the top. Three, four guys, the best hair in baseball. Best hair in baseball? Oof, I don't know. You, you, y'all don't keep up with each other? Like, the best hair? I've never been in that conversation. And I kind of like... You've a, never been in the combo? No, nah, the names I always see are like India, Bader. He's, he's got a nice head of hair. Um, I don't, Bader does? I'm uh, trying to think, guys, that like, have long hair. Yeah, I've never been in that conversation, which... Don't get me wrong. Twenty one, my hair was. What like about like Dansby? Tough. Dansby's good hair too. He's like, a good hair guy. Yeah, I would say probably Dansby's probably got up there. But yeah, I've always I've I've stopped keeping up because I haven't been so in that combo. Like so that's not like that's not like a thing that you feel like you could go. I mean, you got four other days of nothing, so you might as well make it look good on the fifth day, and then you just glistening, and it's just well, that's what I did. When the sweat come down, it's a little bit of conditioner. A bit <laughs> so of sweat that's comes so twenty one. Obviously, you know, COVID on like. Couldn't really get a haircut. Like, yeah. And my, oh, it was so bad. Like, just my hair in 21. So now I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I'm not going out there with frizzy hair anymore. So I would, I shower now before every, like, start. Mm-hmm. That's just, like, part of my routine. It's been good. I kind of, like, have just, that's my transition from getting to the field to, all right, this is starting my routine that you're going to pitch today. Because, you know, I don't want my hair to look, you know, like junk when I'm out there. <laughs> Do you wear cologne on, uh, on, on your start day? I don't know. I I had like a little cologne fa- phase for like a month. Um, but I always forget to like put it on. I feel like I do. I want to wear it because yeah. I, 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 you know, you come, we come in contact with so many people and it's just a nice accent just to smell nice. And you know, I don't know if this is racist. I, I'm going to say it's not racist, but in the Latin culture, always, they always smell, they smell they the best. Smell it's unbelievable. The best. Yeah. You, you shake, shake their hand. You know, get the little, you know, the bro hug. Yeah. You smell like it. Yeah. It's, and now you smell good, you know? And but, it's always, like, it's never a scent that's like, man, that's that's not No, good. it's like, where you get that? Yeah, exactly. It's always, like, it's it's crazy. I mean, everyone talks about, like, uh, Machado being, like, yeah, he he's... he smelled good. I've never, I don't think I've ever gotten to third base when we played the Padres, so I never yeah, got never to, like, to him, yeah. Man. But, like, I know the guys that we have in our clubhouse are, like, always got something. So it's, like, yeah, the, the, I don't know what... It's magic or so it's yeah, a secret, whatever they got. So I don't know. Do you wear cologne outside of the field? Same thing. Like I try to, but like Anything. I just forget. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's like I. So my girlfriend got me for um, Valentine's Day or whatever. Like some cologne in there. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sell my cologne thing. That lasted like a month or two, and then I'm like, <laughs> now nah, nah, I forgot. <laughs> like yeah, it's just yeah, it's bad. Okay, bro. So have you ever done a, an immaculate grid? Yeah. Are you good I was at gonna, it? Uh, in terms of like, I try and go for like the super low rarity score, which maybe like I don't know. I think I could do it like if it was just like not just like normal names. But I'm, I try I'm, and go. I'm like, horrible at them. Really? Terrible. I haven't done my one yet. Me today. and Corvus did it yesterday, and we wasted time. Not good. No. So do you want to do one? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Is this for today? This is for today. It's for All today. Right. Yep. Yep. So Pittsburgh and Yankees, it, that would be I know Rich Hill. Rich Hill works. I was gonna say Clay Holmes too, or Clay Holmes. Yep, that works. See, I like that one percent. I guess the so I've looked at this now. And what, people are like that means like 
That's good. No, that's super rare. Like not a lot of people are getting that. Oh wow. Okay. So some people, from what it sounds like, I've seen like the Barstow guys or whoever, like the John Boy guys, they try to get the slowest percentage, like added up. You huh? know what I mean? So like, see how it like says like one percent. There at the end you'll get this thing. It's like a rarity score, and that'll say like how rare your grid was. Like I'm thinking of names that people aren't gonna think of, as opposed to going like, you know, somebody super famous. Like it's trying to. Get like a unique grid in there. Hey, we just, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know what you're talking about. So we just go keep on going because I'm confused. So, Sam Fran in in the Yankees? You know anybody? Um, Sam Fran in the Yankees. Not that I could think of. I don't know. The top of my head. That's that there. If you like rare stuff, there you go. Yeah, that's rare. You have to, that's going to be, uh, Oh, I'm trying to think. A Yankee that was Rookie of the Year, you know that? I mean, I'm, I'm gonna thinking. be Judge. I, I would, yeah, has to be. But I, see, I would go with like for me, yeah, Judge is good. But like, see how it says 44. percent That means I would try everybody and, got him. I would try and think of one that was like oh, somebody else. Oh, so you're like it's the overachiever thing, kind of. Yeah, like got you're it. trying to okay. get like a low got score. It. Got it. Got it. It's like even if I think I'm you just trying to fill it out. I don't exactly. Care. Yeah. Yeah. I just I, try I was to do cool. Something. Like in school, I was cool with just taking. I ain't want to see. But if I'm I got to see, I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm a masochist. Know? So I try to put myself through like a grind here and just be like, all right, like oh, whose yeah, crazy name grinding. could I think? I I'm yeah. not a big, I, I have to grind and I, you know, you learn to enjoy grinding, but I'm not going to grind on Yeah, I just, grid. but you know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> you Pittsburgh do. and the Twins. Ooh. Um, I think probably Rich Hill could probably fill in on that one again too. I don't know. Did he pitch for the Twins? I don't know. I feel like Rich Hill's played for a lot of teams. He's played so for he, a lot of teams. I don't know that he's played for the Twins. Uh, I mean, I would say like Roberto Clemente. Did he? He he had to have won a Gold Glove, right? Did they have a Gold Glove back then? I don't know. Like when did the Gold Glove start? Hello, it works. There you go. There it goes. Thirty-one percent. That means I'm. That that's not good. Sorry. It's solid. I mean, it's good for me though. Yeah, I mean. I don't think I would have come up with anybody else. Like, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? So like, Brandon Crawford. Yeah. Uh, no, we. You want to go more rare? No, that's, we're, we're going to go for just filling it in. Okay. Brandon Did Crawford. you and Corbs get all nine? No. All right, then. Uh, yeah, we I'm, we're close. going for just a perfect group. We, then. We've already, we've already, we've already beat me and Corbs. Yeah, we're all right. We're going with that. Um, I don't know any. I don't know anybody that's played for the Twins. <laughs> <laughs> just to be honest, Twins like, and Rookie of the Year. Uh, I mean, Joe Mauer. Yeah, try that. Right? There you go, Joe Mauer. I would think. Wow, Joe Mauer didn't win rookie of the year. Played on the Twins, like that's. I mean, like did Kirby Puckett win a rookie of the year? I don't even know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, Justin Moore, no. Mm. You like more no? We only or, got. Well, we're not gonna no, be able to get a perfect five, one yeah. now. Yeah. Golly. Yeah, that's tough. I'm blaming this one on you. You trying to go too too rare? Ooh, I want to be. Well, rare. we both went with Joe Mauer, and I that didn't wanna work. Be one, I want to be the one percent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so, uh, so let's see a Gold Glove and a Rookie of the Year. Let's see if we know that one. I don't even know. Rookie of the Year, a Gold Glove, and I don't even know rookies rookies of the year. Like, I mean, mm. I mean, when you go back, you talk to Corbs. You can't really tell them you was that much better because we only got one. I mean, yeah, that's true. What? How many did you guys get? Three. And you only got four. Oh, we got three guesses left, though. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Them. And this is when I would just try and just shut it down. Just be like, ah, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, because oh, I, I do crossword puzzles. And when I don't know the crossword puzzle and I get into now, I have to expand into other stuff. I can't do. Nah, I just want. I mean, to do something yeah. Else. I would. I got. See, I'm the one. Like, I would have you to. I would have to finish it. Come on, yeah. let's do it. All right, let's do it. So, but I mean, we could be here for who knows how long. Well, we got a couple more minutes. All right, let's see what we got. Minutes. Rookie. I just of the year. don't know. Like now, you're. Ex- the problem is, I'm expanding in the twins' history. I have no idea what that. Yeah, I'm trying to think like the twins. And I, I don't even know. You know, I guess I'm with the. Do- you know, I'm with the Dodgers. You would think I know something about San Fran, but I don't. Yeah, I don't, San Fran and the Yankees. I'm trying to, like, you oh, think? Carlos Rodon. Oh, there you go. It's 
twenty one percent. That's now too two high. more than what that's you got. That's too high though. <laughs> <laughs> two more than what you <laughs> All right. All right. So um, we got let's see. Yeah, we Pirates and Twins is tough. I don't, I, know. I don't know the Pirates and yeah, no. Mm-mm. I don't know San Fran and the Twins. Like it just seems like the Twins and San Fran don't go together. Like if you were played with San Fran, you probably ain't about to sign with the Twins. You probably you didn't know? play, but somebody must have. Somebody, somebody had must. To. Have, somebody, somebody must have. Somebody played. did it. Who? What was the reliever's name? I think there was a reliever. Um, oh, Romo. Yeah, uh, Sergio Romo. Yeah, yeah. That with the Giants and the try. Twins. That's a good one. Yeah, yep. the 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 San Fran. Damn, I was I played with Sergio too. I didn't even think about uh, that. That's ten percent. There you go. You called that's it good. Too. You said the re- uh, reliever. But I was thinking another re- reliever for Pittsburgh and the Twins. Uh, um, so that wasn't even the one you was talking about. No, it wasn't. So I'm not gonna take Rodriguez. Like Rodriguez. Oh, man. Nah, don't don't put that down. I don't know. I don't. I a gold glove in the rookie of the year. That's what's throwing me out because I don't even know who the rookie of the years were. And you that means you've won the gold glove in the same year too. Right. So like. Who's uh, did Arenado win a rookie of the year? I don't know. I don't know who's won rookie of the year. Yes. I have no idea. Are you uh, are you on this? No. Did you win rookie of the year I and a gold I glove? I wasn't eligible for rookie of the year. We've talked about him in the show. We have talked about him in the show. Yeah, someone. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Pujols? Arenado. Oh, McGuire. Oh. McGuire won a gold glove. They was just giving him out if he won a gold glove. <laughs> he won a gold. That's crazy. Shout out to you, Mark. Look at that rarity score, got, though. That's yeah, 0.5%. I mean, yeah, there you go. That's what makes Zach Gallon happen. The, damn, that's tough. I mean, I didn't, I didn't I know McGuire won a. I would have never in my life guessed he won a gold glove. Me neither. You know, and that's did Arenado win rookie of the year? But sorry, sorry, Mark. Because I would have worked to Arenado. Whenever it's Gold Glove, I go to Arenado. My guys won like a yeah, hundred of them. Yeah, 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 like, I mean. So let's get to some fan questions, bro. All right, let's do it. Um, how did you feel? I got a fan. They said, "How did you feel when? How does it feel to strike out Otani? I mean, it's probably just a strikeout, I would assume. But you know, expect, let's go with this. How did, how would it feel if Otani's up? It's second and third two outs and you need this it's uh i guess it would be the bot or the top of the fifth bottom of the fifth whenever with with two outs you need this out for a uh what's it when you go six six innings and in quality start quality start yeah. you need this for a quality start but you also need it for a dub for the boys like and you punched him out what would you do yeah i mean i Probably and it's be. not even just about him. This is just about the more about the spot. But yeah, I mean, it's it's he's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's uh, there's not there's not many holes in his in his swing spots to go. Um, you got to you know pick your spots where you're gonna you know challenge, not challenge, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was it's crazy to punch him out, especially. Yeah. I mean, you know how it was they were chanting his name, yeah. like or chanting "Come to Seattle." Yeah. So yeah. I was like, man, this is so nice to chant for me to come yeah. to Seattle. Like, that was, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so yeah, I was just like. Man, if I if he gets me right here, I'm like this place is gonna go to bananas, yeah, and gonna it's gonna crazy. be everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I, that's that's shout out to Sean Murphy because I probably would have thrown him a three two heater just because it's all star game, like whatever. I'm a, he if, called the curveball. If, if you threw a three two heater, he would hit it 700 feet. Oh my gosh! Yeah, like that. It would it would have 1,000 percent be a home run. Yeah, unless I mean, I, if I miss, if it was a ball, I could have walked. Yeah, him. but if it was in the strike zone, home he might have hit it. Yeah, to, yeah, to the. Pacific Ocean. I don't it, know. It was like, yeah. Do you? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure you do. But like, how much do you appreciate? Like, kind of what he is doing. It's. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. It's like. I mean, I get like, you know, Babe Ruth did what he did, but mm-hmm. like, this doesn't. This is unbe- the, unbelievable compared to Babe Ruth. Yeah. And it's like, it's funny to hear people be like, not that I ever saw Babe Ruth play, but like just from the game of back then to now, like to people even put in the same conversation. It's It's like, it's, it's not even close. So just, he's one of those guys that when you're done playing, like I'll be like, I played against Otani, played against the greatest player that we've maybe ever seen. I think we don't appreciate it while we're playing. You know, I, I, we do to a certain degree, but like we don't also because we, we, I think we get numb to it. Yeah. You're like, okay, like it's it's on MLB network. You're like, this guy's on there again. You're like, but like, 
he's throwing 100 and hitting balls 500. Mm-hmm. The, the thing that I always get to, like, the pitcher part of it, because, like, I know how hard hitting is, but I don't at the same time. Right. Like, You know how hard pitching is. I know how hard pitching is, and that, like, he just is going to – he's going to swat 55, 60 homers this year. <laughs> but then he also throws 100. Like, that's the that's the part of that fires me up. Yeah. Like, this guy's throwing 100. Like, how many guys throw 100 in the big leagues? Yeah. I mean, now a lot, but not not – they don't hit 50, 60 homes. Yeah, too, they're like, I mean, that's the thing. It's like this guy is going to uh, – it's it's fascinating, really. So if you had one matchup, right, one guy you're like, you know what, I want to see what it's like to face him, who would it be? You Me? Versus, I'm facing him? Yeah. In any part of, like, history, I yeah, guess? Well, whoever. Um, probably Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. I just want to see. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll talk a lot of shit, and I'll be like – Babe Ruth good. He would, hit, <laughs> he would hit 0 50 today. Like just and I get I mean it's it's gonna be the way it is like when we're old too. People are like, you guys couldn't play like yeah. now. And so, yeah. so it's just one of those things. But yeah, I just you know, I want to see like was it legit or was it like yeah, you know, I don't know. If I was a pitcher No disrespectful, but like I just no, want to no, know. You want to see it's Yeah, like, I just want to see. If I was a pitcher, I I would wanna see I would want to face Barry Bonds to see what it's really that's another good one. Really like. Like, you're telling me I can't throw one pitch in the strike zone? Not one? The, it's a, I love hearing stories about Barry Bonds. Like, so Mike Fetter is our bullpen coach. I'm not sure if he played with Barry or just, like, was friends with him because they played at the same time. And he, he would always just be like, Barry got one pitch a night, and he never missed. That's what I'm saying. He never missed. You're telling me I can't throw one pitch, and it's <laughs> automatic homer? <laughs> like. <laughs> The, f- you know? the fact that they walked him with the bases loaded is just like, it's fascinating yeah, to me. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's Barry's another good one. Like, but I, I, that I've seen enough clips and like enough as a kid to like kind of grasp how yeah. good he was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, babe, the, you would never. Yeah, you just never know. But yeah, Barry, I mean, it's, and I just talking to guys like Stephen Boat. So he's from oh, like yeah. that area and he's like watching, going to the game and watching Barry Bonds hit. He was like, it was a sight to see. He's like, so every three innings, the whole entire stadium would get up on their Just feet because, you and know. watch him. Like He was like, it was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Okay, so one more question, bro. <clears throat> would you rather be forced to sing along or, <laughs> dan- to, or dance to every song you hear? Would you rather sing along with every song you hear or dance to every song you hear? Sing. Like, okay, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, like, dance would be, I'm out on I'm, I'm out on dancing. Yeah. Like, I mean, at a, like at a wedding, could I... Have yeah, so a little you, bit of rhythm, like I, like all right, like I could, I'm not gonna make a fool of myself, but the singing, I like I, at some point, I probably will make a fool of myself dancing. So singing, yeah. I think I could keep it at least tempered to the point where it's like whatever. So if you're going when you go to the wedding, right, and this is gonna tell me a lot about you. <laughs> you go to a wedding, whatever you get out there, it's time to dance. Are you just a guy that does the simple two step? Uh yeah probably I mean it depends you don't I guess. get in you don't try and I mean it depends not. if the drinks are flowing maybe like who oh. knows like maybe like but yeah for the most part I'm I'm, I'm trying not to draw a lot of attention to myself uh in situations like that but you know you you never know what what gets in you if the the vibes are high but yeah for the most part I'm I'm pretty pretty chill. I see you with the drink flowing the drinks flowing you know hair just you know shining off the <laughs> whatever but the only thing that was sucks is like you know typically the guys pull their tie off and you know it's time around your neck yours would be clip on though man because they don't sell <laughs> ties like that at marshall that's true so you just got actually clip. no i've gotten some ties at marshall's and they tie yeah you, know, you don't have to clip it around your head i that you would never see me doing that oh you wouldn't even if it was a tie tie whatever i'm not tying around my head like, no no i'd take the tie off maybe and leap but i'm not tying around my head so you won't get that lit no, that's see, that's the thing where you're drawing attention to yourself. Mm, okay. It's All like, right. Well, you know, I had to ask. Yeah, no, I'm not. Ask. I'm not trying to. You no, know, you're not making a fool of yourself. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? I well, thanks for coming on the show, man. You know, um, I've seen you a couple of times. You know, especially when I went out to eat, uh, or when I went to grab some food, I saw you and your girl, and uh, you know, we talked for a second, and I could tell you were super personal and. Just a genuine good dude, and I wish you all the success in the world. You know, we got a long time playing against each other. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure uh, there'll be many good battles. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. I want to give you a shout out. Thank you for um, letting me hit my first Dodger homer off. You. <laughs> I'll never forget it. And the, On a the back only re- foot change up. The only reason why I remember the homer is because the pitch I hit 
I had no business swinging it. No business swinging it. No business swinging it. And I, I don't know how I hit it. When I hit it, I think <laughs> I was I was running around the bases like, what just happened? I so yeah, I, I remember throwing. I was like, man, that's a pretty good pitch. And you hit the homer, and I said. He's that good, I guess. No, like, no, yeah, that's, that was luck. no seriously. That was I'm luck. like, that was we, luck. I must have watched that clip. They're in the in the dugout that alley after. Like, there was a lot of guys watching. Like, God, I need to see that again. How did you do that? I'm like, you just like pulled your hands in. I don't know. Like, I, don't I was know. like, I think that's probably how I see it out of your hand. Like, it it's, it's I see it horrible. I swing it every. I could, I just was like, this is the big leagues. It's like <laughs> yeah, I'm no. like this. Like, <laughs> I, I yeah. It was uh. I was like, I thought that was a pretty good pitch, but nah, you you seen what you do in the big leagues, dog. But uh, just keep on going, man. Keep on uh, setting the example for the guys. You know, you like I told Corbin yesterday, you him, all you guys, but especially like you and him, the main guys that are out there producing each and every time they're on the field. Like y'all are gonna be important, bro, and it's important to just to just embrace it and know that you got to perform. And Absolutely. Especially going down for this Cy Young race. Like, I'm not adding pressure, bro. I'm just giving you I like facts, it. See, this thing, know? I like the, I like the added pressure, though. Like, there I would, you go. I would rather pressure. be yep. like, this is like the same thing like with the streak. Like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I got to go out and earn this thing. Mm-hmm. Like, there was lineups that I had to face. I'm like, that's not going to be Oh, your easy. scoreless streak. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, that's not going to be like an easy lineup. How many I, innings was it again? 44 to 30. 40, yeah, 40, yeah. yeah. There like, you go. I had to go to Colorado. Like, there was like, I'm like, I want. I love this. Like, I want to mm-hmm. go out and earn. Like, if I did it, I earned it. Like, that's, right. yeah. like I don't want anyone to just hand it to me. Yeah. Like, I want to take it. So, yeah, I, I got to love the pressure. It's like almost like it's a little extra motivation. Yeah, good. When's your birthday, bro? Uh, August 3rd. Oh, you just – it just it was passed. like last week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, before we wrap, guys, if you miss Zach's birthday, he would love <laughs> TJ Maxx, Marshalls, any of those – Gift cards sent to his locker. Attention, Zach Gallen, Diamondback, Chase Field. Um, just it, you can find it on Google or, or whatever. Chase Field and so uh, Zach, <laughs> be ready, bro. You're about to get some I'll, gift cards. I'll, what I'll probably do is I would probably donate them to you know help somebody get some some clothes. All right, well you got to get you some clothes too. But please don't send them if you don't like really don't send them. But if you do, I will donate them. I won't, I won't use them All for right, myself. So make sure you send one that is only for Zach because he. <laughs> He only got clip on time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the big league. So, anyways, we'll catch you guys next time on On Base.